David, oh, Tom. Mr. Beer. To the right. Here. And the mic. Yeah. Testing one, two, three. Good morning. My name is Tom Siebel. I am a computer scientist from the University of Illinois. I am now in my fourth decade of uh, working on projects related to the realization and commercial commercialization of what were then bleeding edge technologies, uh, beginning first with Larry Ellison and Bob Miner uh, in the realization and commercialization of the promise of relational database systems. Uh, later on, we were involved with a project uh, that became quite substantial. It uh, was known as Siebel Systems, but that was about the application of information technology and communication technology to the problems of sales, marketing, and customer service, which was a fascinating problem. And for now, the last decade, okay, we've been doing some uh, very interesting work in the realization of uh, large-scale cyber-physical systems which is uh, commonly known as the Internet of Things, and it's, uh, it's quite interesting, quite challenging, and that's where we've spent, been spending time. Now, in the course of that, we've also been, in case the last 15 years, uh, we've been involved in some interesting, um, uh, what I would call multidisciplinary uh, collaborative efforts to make change happen. And I want to talk about three, so outside of business life, and I want to talk about those three examples that may or may not be useful as you uh, uh, deliberate. Um, uh, the first is called Siebel Scholars. Siebel Scholars is an organization that was founded in 1999, okay, and it consists of these institutions. And at these institutions, each year, the dean picks the top five graduate students based upon academic merit, okay, just academic merit and leadership. And each of those graduate students receives a $35,000 award to finish their last year of school, whether it's the PhD program in bioengineering at Johns Hopkins, whether, whether, it's, the, whether it's the computer science program at Tsinghua, and $35,000 goes a long way in Beijing, okay? Uh, 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 <clears throat> whether it is the, um, the uh, business school at Harvard, or the, uh, and now we're in energy sciences. So today there are, and if you are one of the top five people at Tsinghua or at the Princeton, or at Princeton or at Johns Hopkins or at Harvard, I mean, you're probably pretty bright. And there are a thousand of Siebel scholars today. Uh, and um, every year it's a very active collaborative community. And every year we get together, can I do this? I think I can. Uh, and uh, I mean, the Siebel Scholars today, the CEO of Google is a Siebel Scholar. Okay, the, 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 I mean, they're, they're all over the place. They're doing important things, and someday the premier of China will be a Siebel Scholar. I didn't, I didn't know it, and it wasn't part of the criteria, but just I will put it on the record. Every Siebel Scholar that has come out of Tsinghua has been a party member, uh, but uh, that's been kind of curious. Now, but, but, but fascinatingly, and, and Siebel scholars serve on the faculty of some of the most distinguished research institutions on the planet. Now, but the, but the fun part of Siebel scholars is, is the collaboration, okay? We get together as a group annually, okay? And with, with the existing class and then alumni come and we talk about, we get together for the example, the first meeting was at the University of Chicago in 2000. The subject was the threat of nuclear proliferation. We, were, we spent three days with Al Haig, John Major, Bob Gates, this big new Brzezinski. I mean, can you imagine you know, what that was like, okay, for these students to be sitting down at breakfast, lunch, and dinner and engage in the dialogue? Uh, at Stanford, we studied stem cell. We had, a, we had a conference at the University of Illinois on the U.S. criminal justice system. Uh, we had, uh, uh, we've talked about drugs. Uh, we talked about the economics of alternative energy at the University of California that was hosted by Bob Bergino at Northwestern. We discussed water at MIT. We talked about energy. Uh, uh, Bob Tejan hosted us at Howard Hughes to talk about synthetic biology. 
uh, with Craig Bentner and other rock stars. Uh, that we had a fascinating discussion uh, uh, in 2012, right before the election, on class warfare in America, uh, hosted again at you know the perfect place to talk about class warfare, UC Berkeley. Okay, and we had you know every everyone there from Neil Ferguson to uh, uh, um, uh, oh come on, unsafe at any speed, Ralph Nader. Okay, and it was you know just sparks flew for three days, and so these these. We will have three, four hundred people will get together. We'll bring together some of the foremost experts to lead the discussion. But it's very interactive with the, with 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 the uh, with all of these civil scholars, current and past scholars. The next conference will be held at the National Academy. Okay, the uh, we, the, the 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 subject is going to be grid cybersecurity. Okay, this is an incredibly important topic. Okay, that I believe is. You know, the United States government is in a state of denial. Okay, the, certainly the U.S. utilities are in a state of denial. Okay, and we are going to elevate this discussion. Okay, and it will be this. So this will be a, a fascinating dialogue. And and uh, I am T. Siebel at Siebel.org. And if anybody has any ideas of people who should who would be, should be participating in this conference, or if you would like to participate, I will be. Uh, oh, I got, I'm in trouble already with <laughs> Kelly. Kelly's going to slap me down. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it, Kelly. Um, but this is important. You, okay, and, and we're going to make it more important. Now, so, so these are the things we've talked about, alternative energy, water, energy and climate in recent years. Now, as consequences, as the, uh, of secondary effects of Siebel Scholars, we held a conference at Stanford, I forgot what year it was, 2002, on stem cell research. It was headed up by again, Irv Wiseman, pretty smart guy. He's the guy who like isolated the stem cell. Okay, and then so we got together with Irv Wiseman and Bob Tejan, who many of you know because he's the CEO of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute and a very distinguished cellular biologist. And on a fly fishing trip in Montana, we came up with this idea for the Stem Cell Institute that we funded with about $15 million. And the idea was to take, to, to get synergies between the skills, the you know, unbelievable considerable skill sets at Stanford and considerable skills at Berkeley and get them working together with visiting scholars from around the world. Okay, and I, I forget what year we, we started this. It was some years ago. This has been going on for about nine years. And it's amazing what these people have accomplished. I mean, sparks have been flying. They, they are curing uncurable diseases. I mean, stage four breast cancer used to be a death sentence. Okay, today it's not a death sentence. Um, they, you know, they've been curing, you know, today they have, you know, uh, 83 Siebel investigators from a lot of countries. They've done seeds grants to support, I think, you know, 33 researchers. They're curing, you know, melanoma, sickle cell, uh, stage four breast cancer. You know, they're now growing, they're using stem cells to grow bone. They're using stem cells to grow, you know, to, 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 to generate organs. They are, I mean, miracles are happening there. And it's, you know, you, the, you fund these institutes and, you know, more often than not, a lot doesn't, I'm, I'm not certain a lot happens, okay? These guys are changing the world and it, it's super exciting. Um, and, you know, these are just kind of slides of, you know, things that they've been doing. You know, here they're, you know, growing, you know, bone from fat tissue. Well, this is, you know, I was attacked and mauled by an elephant in August 1st, 2009. I had 19 reconstructive surgeries because I was missing like, you know, four centimeters of tibia. So this is something that is near and dear to my heart. Um, uh, you know, they, unfortunately, they did it about nine years too late. Uh, but, uh, but it's an important issue. Um, now, so this is one of the, one of the, the, the second, uh, a second um, um, derivative of the Siebel Scholars has been the Siebel Energy Institute. So if we look at what's going on with the grid, Okay, the grid has been identified, I think, by the National Academy of Engineers as the most significant scientific achievement of the 20th century. I believe as this value change becomes censored, it will be in what we know as the smart grid, where all of the devices are becoming remotely machine addressable. This will be, I believe, one of the most significant scientific achievements of the 21st century. And the um, <clears throat> and you know, two trillion dollars are being invested this decade, two trillion dollars to censor this value change everything from the home thermostat to the vibration sensor on the nuclear reactor. 
So if we look at, the, so we have a convergence of Moore's law here with the systems, operational systems, and Metcalf's law with this fully connected sensor network. And this basically becomes, this is a classic cyber physical problem. Okay, this is, you know, big data, analytics, machine learning at large. Okay, so we're dealing with, you know, petascale sensor networks, uh, I'm sorry, gigascale net sensor networks, petascale data uh, sets, um, uh, massive processing requirements, and you know most. And when, once you solve the data integration problems, once you solve the data aggregation problems, once you solve the ability to process at that speed, it basically all comes down to a machine learning problem. Okay, well, machine learning, and nobody knows less about it in this room than I. Okay, but uh, you know it, this appears to be a science in its infancy. Okay, but we can apply machine learning to dramatically increase the safety, increase the reliability, lower the cost, and reduce the environmental impact of power generation delivery. And so we came up with this idea of this, this, a multidisciplinary, multinational energy institute that basically consists of Tsinghua, University of Tokyo, Ecole Polytechnique, Polytechnico di Torino, Princeton, Carnegie Mellon, MIT, Berkeley, and last but not least, the University of Illinois at Urbana. And, the, uh, and we are, it's a very innovative idea where initially this has been funded with not that much money by your standards, it's about $10 million, and it's headed up by, by Shankar Sastry uh, from Berkeley. And what we do is we do calls for papers. Oh, we have very active industry partners with, you know, Honeywell and, and, and Nell and Entergy and hopefully someday UTC uh, and the uh, at Johnson Control. So, so we have industry very much involved. But what we do is we put out calls for papers, okay, to advance the science of machine learning in meaningful ways. And we fund the writing of the paper to the tune of $150,000 to $100,000. So then people go on off to Medi in Japan or the EU in Europe or the NSF or DOE or whoever it be to get, to develop this machine, these machine learning algorithms for revenue protection, customer segmentation and targeting, volt var, uh, uh, whatever it may be. And the idea is that all of the science of this goes into the public domain. Uh, and it's, it's very exciting. It's been very well received. I mean, there is no question that the work that these people are doing, whether it's drone-based analytics or a vault var, I mean, this will, this will change the face of, uh, of energy, and it's gonna, it, this will make the world a better place. So these are three examples that we've been involved in, and these are, these are examples of work that we've funded, and I think now they've received, I think, almost $10 million in additional funding in less than a year, okay, from, uh, these, from these grant proposals that we funded. So um, these are the types of things that are working on. Um, this is how we've been trying to make change happen, okay? These are all very much multidisciplinary approaches, and uh, it, um, I think that there's some probability that in stem cell research and energy that we will make change happen and make it happen for the better. Thank you.